Hey there, welcome to the Movie Review Mom YouTube channel. If you are brand new to my channel, yay, I'm so glad you're here. My goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can make the best decision for you and your family as to whether or not you want to spend time or money or both sometimes watching a specific film. And if you are a subscriber who's returning, yay, I truly appreciate your support. And if you just like or comment down below, that helps to spread magical YouTube fairy dust all over my channel so more people can find it. All right, so the name of the movie I'm reviewing today is called Jesus Revolution. This dramatic and moving biopic is now playing in some theaters, but mostly streaming online because this movie came out a couple of months ago. I was really sick and traveling and I reviewed the film and it's on my moviereviewmom.com website, but I didn't have the energy or the time to film it. So you might be thinking, well, normally I do all of the new latest movies, right? Which is true. But I've also noticed that so many people still go back and watch all of my older movie reviews, I have so many of them, and I'll get comments from movies that I reviewed maybe two years ago or even more. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do this because I thought it was a good movie and it might have flown under the radar for some people. So I wanted you to know about it. So let's get started. The movie is rated PG-13 and it is two hours long. And the movie review mom grade I'm giving it is an A. So let me explain why. I'll give you an overview in a nutshell and then I'll point out things I liked and didn't like as well as offer tips for parents, themes worth talking about, funny lines, interesting lines, and movie recommendations that are sort of similar that you might also like. You ready? All right, so in a nutshell, this movie is about the national spiritual awakening in the early 1970s and its origins within a community of teenage hippies in Southern California. The film was directed by John Irwin and Brent McCorkle. So I was just a little girl in the 70s, very little, and remember feeling just a little bit frightened of the cigarette smoking bead wearing teenagers that would walk near my house because there was a middle school down the street. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and God were all happening in the 1970s. So this film is a biopic of Harvest Crusades founder, Greg Laurie, Chuck Smith, Lonnie Frisbee, and enthusiastic teens looking for answers and purpose in life. And doesn't everybody look for that? So there were a lot of things I really liked. Here's a list of some of them. This definitely doesn't feel like a typical cheesy, preachy Christian movie, in case that's what you're thinking. You'll feel all the feels and might even think about some things differently after you watch this. I've been a fan of Kelsey Grammer ever since I first saw him in the popular TV show, Cheers. Did you ever see that? He gives an outstanding, thoughtful performance in this role as the famous pastor, Chuck Smith. Fans of the popular and inspirational TV series, The Chosen, will be thrilled to see Jonathan Rumi as Lonnie Frisbee. He makes such a fantastic Jesus in The Chosen, and I am dying for the next season to come out. How about you? Comment down below if you are a fan of that series. Just great acting all around in this movie. The fantastic cast also includes Joel Courtney, Kimberly Williams Paisley, Anna Grace Barlow, Charlie Morgan Patton, and Nick Cirillo, or Cerillo, depending on where he's from. There is impressive cinematography by Akis Konstantakopoulos. I hope I pronounced that correctly. This soundtrack is fantastic and will quickly take you back in time. The characters all are deliciously flawed and real because they're not characters at all, but represent real people. There are some humorous, insightful, and heartfelt moments. I loved the foot washing scene. So sweet, so symbolic. 
At the end of the movie, we get to see video clips of the real people involved in the events of the 1970s Jesus Revolution and kind of see where they are now. It's ironic that being a, called a square back in the 70s was considered to be such a terrible insult that people did things that they might not normally do just to prove that label false. I know the same thing still exists today, uh, but people define square differently now, don't they? And they use different words than square. Bible passages are often quoted, but not in a super preachy way, I didn't think. Instead, it was shown as an honest attempt to find out what had God or Jesus said about those various things in the Bible. Non-Christians can still enjoy the film as an interesting biopic, Again, with the music, the cinematography, and all of that, Christians, I think, will definitely appreciate it at another level. Now, with all that praise, there were a few things that I didn't like or just thought could have been maybe done a little bit better. For example, the movie is really long, two hours. I think a few scenes could have easily been omitted to get down to that 90-minute mark, which seems to be the sweet spot lately in films. The movie makes the viewer believe that it was all about Jesus. But the reality is that there were a lot of drugs involved, too. It's unclear how many of the hippies actually experienced a true deep conversion that lasted a lifetime. Now, let me give you some tips for parents. Just a couple of them. There is no profanity, which is great. Uh, however, teens take drugs, and we see some of that kind of you know, sex and drugs and rock and roll kind of stuff going on. We don't see a lot of details, thank goodness. So some of the themes that are illustrated very well are truth, love, faith, Christianity, hypocrisy, search for God, desperation, searching for all the right things in all the wrong places, and finding your true calling in life. All right, so I always write down funny lines and interesting lines simply so I can share them with you so you can get a taste for the film and the quality and the dialogue and all of that. I noticed I didn't write down any funny lines. It's not a laugh out loud comedy, that's for sure. It's more of a drama, but there were a few amusing moments, but nothing that made me quickly write down a line to share it with you. But I did write down quite a few interesting or insightful lines. I have them all on my written review at moviereviewmom.com, but I'll share a few of them with you right now. So for example, Lonnie Frisbee states this, he's uh, played by Jonathan Romy. He says, there is an entire generation of people today looking for God. And I think that's true throughout all generations of time, right? It's interesting because I've heard some people say people do not want God anymore. And then I've also heard people say, wow, there's a resurgence of God, people looking for God right now. I think it just depends on what you are particularly looking for. But there are always those who are searching for truth and more in their life. They feel that sense of void and they're hoping to find it in God. So another line that Lonnie Frisbee says, played by Jonathan Rumi, is, Families are like bands, man. They break up. <laughs> and then he also says, we can only walk through doors opened to us. I thought that was really good advice. And then um, another character played by Anna Grace Barlow says, it's not just for hippies. It's so much bigger than that. And I think a lot of the hippies were going in for the sex and drugs and rock and roll and having a great old time. You know, it was a social movement. However, there were also, also those who really were looking for God. And then I love this line spoken by Mrs. Smith. She says, don't be so arrogant to think God can't work through your failures. And Mrs. Smith is the wife of one of the preachers. And, you know, so many preachers feel that identity crisis, kind of the um, identity or imposter syndrome. And so she was just saying, you know, yeah, of course you're weak. You have failures, weaknesses, but God can still work through you. And I loved that message. All right. So there are some other movies that I instantly thought of while I was watching this, mostly because it takes you back in time. So one is called Boogie Nights from 1997, and it's got a great soundtrack and it'll take you back to the 60s, 70s, even some 80s, but mostly the 70s. And then Nothing to Lose is another good movie. And the last one is Show Me the Father. Those are both a little bit more religious movies. Uh, 
Christian movies often get such a bad rap for just being so cheesy. And I often agree because they're not really well done as films, which I know so many Christian filmmakers personally who are trying to get out of that box that Hollywood has put them in. And I know also so many people who want to see good Christian movies. And so I hope that these filmmakers continue making movies like this for a Christian based audience. Again, this movie can be enjoyed by anybody who's not Christian, but those who want those Christian movies, uh, I think will enjoy this one. All right. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me. When you get a minute, run over to Facebook, where we have a Facebook group called Movie Review Mom. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. Have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.